Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought we'd make this fun little pull tab card. So let's go ahead and get started. So for stamps today, we're going to be using this set here. This has all these cute little ants and the picnic basket and some food. And this set is called Crazy Antics. And the next set we're going to be using is this one. And this has the leaves and branch, which we're going to be using today and all these other cute little critters, and this is called a bug deal. For paper, we're gonna be using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I've placed these in my Misty, and I'm gonna be inking them up using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp these. I'm just using that towel there just to press this out. And then I'm gonna stamp a couple more of those leaves as well. And you can see those there. So I'm starting off with the black. This is N15. These are the Tombow dual tip markers. And these are a water-based marker. And I've also, I'm also going to be using the blender pen. This is the Tombow blender pen. So I've placed a little bit of that black ink down towards the bottom of these ants. And then I'm just going to pull it up towards the top. And if you get too much ink on the blender, you just scribble it off on your scrap paper until it goes clear. Now with 879, 977, and 912, I'm going to color in this branch. So I'm applying that lightest color first all over the branch, then the mid-tone brown, just about maybe halfway up and on the bottoms of the, those branches there. And then a little bit of the darkest one, along the bottom edges. I'm going back to my blender pen and I'm going to just kind of in a circular motion try to move these colors together and blend them up towards the top of that branch. Now again, I'm going to clean off that blender pen, and I'm going to 946, 173, and 277. So yellow and two shades of green here. I'm going to apply the blender all over the leaf first. That's just going to make it easier to blend this. Then I'm going to use the light green, then the dark green, and I've placed a little bit of that yellow color along the edge of the leaf on both sides, and I'm just gonna pull those colors together. Kind of blending from the center out towards the edges, and then I'm gonna grab that little bit of yellow and blend it in along the edges there. And the yellow just gives it a little bit more of a highlight. So now with number 725, I'm just gonna add a little pink to the cheeks. And I, off camera, I colored in all the food, and I will list all of those marker colors down below. And they'll also, all. All the products will also be listed down below and on my blog. So I've attached the coordinating dies with a little bit of purple tape and I'm going to run these through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. So I went ahead and did that and I have all my little pieces cut out here. Now using this largest rectangle from the outside in stitched rectangle stackables, I'm going to die cut one from paper, the Lawn Fawn paper bag and one from the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I've got the two panels here and you can see they have that beautiful stitched edge. Now I want to create my little ant hill. So I'm using the simple stitched hillside borders dies and I'm going to use that one that has the largest rounded edge to it. And that's going to be the little mound for my ant hill. So I'm taping that down and I'm running it through my die cutting machine. And that leaves a nice stitched edge there. So now I'm grabbing the second smallest circle from the outside in stitch circle stackables dies. And I want to create a little opening to my ant hill here. So I'm going to tape this down just partially. Just want a little bit of that to die cut that little opening at the top. And I wanted that stitch border to match. So now I've grabbed some ground espresso distress oxide ink. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that ink all around the edges here and a little bit more right around the opening to the anthill here. 
So I'm going to continue blending this out and again kind of leaving that center area the lightest. Now next what we're going to do is I'm going to apply some of that ink directly to my glass media mat. I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from my distress sprayer and then just using a small paintbrush I'm going to spatter this all over just to give it a little bit more of the look of dirt or sand. Once that's done, I'm going to heat set that quickly. Then I'm coming in with the Liquid Stardust. This is from Lawn Fawn, and you want to shake this really well before you use it. And it's this beautiful glittery liquid. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of water to this, and I'm going to spatter this all over. And this is going to give a little bit of a shine to our, to our dirt or our sand here, which really adds a lot of texture. So hopefully you can see the beautiful sparkle we're going to get from this. So you can heat set that with your heat gun or set that aside to dry. So that'll sit down at the bottom of our panel. To do the sky, I'm going to use Lemon Drop and Fruit Punch. These are the Hero Hues Reactive Inks. So this is a combination dye and pigment ink, which reacts well with water and it goes on really smooth on your paper. I'm using the applicator tool to apply the ink and I'm going to keep it the darkest down towards the bottom. And some of these colors from the Hero Hues are just absolutely gorgeous. And if you want to check out a card I just did using the Hero Hues Reactive Inks and I do talk a little bit more about the inks. It's called Hero Art Circle Pattern Bold Print Card. And I'll put that up at the top here. It's on my YouTube channel and it's also on my blog as well. So you can see how beautifully these inks blend together. I just love these two colors together. So now what I'm going to do is use the reactive property to this ink. And I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water. I'm using my distress sprayer. Then I'm going to blot that up with a paper towel. And that's going to give me that beautiful spattered effect. And you can see that up close there. So we're going to create the pull tab mechanism here. So we need all of these pieces. We're going to grab that straight slot, not the curved one. So we're going to leave that one behind. And this is the Let's Toast Pull Tab Add-on set. So what I want is for that one little ant to be popped out from the opening. I want him to show. So for right now, I'm going to use my glue tube from Lawn Fawn and I'm just going to glue that little ant on top of this cupcake. Just so I can see where I need to position things because I know I want him to be showing when the, uh, when the card is closed. So now I want to determine where the top of that mechanism needs to be or where the top of that little slot needs to be. So you just have to play around with this to determine where you want things to go. So when that pull tab is all the way up, I want him to be sitting at the top of that opening. So I've, I've uh, played around with that, found out exactly where I need to position that. I'm going to tape that down. And then this creates the little tab at the top for our pull tab. So what I want to do is line up that metal right along the top edge of the card. And then I'm going to center it on the card and I'm going to tape that in place as well. So I can go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine and I'm going to die cut these other little pieces as well out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So here I've got the little mechanism. And first what I want to do is follow those score lines. I'm going to fold it towards myself and then away from myself. So here again, towards myself and then away from my, myself. And that creates a little Z fold. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to press that out. Make sure I have a nice good crease here. And you can see that's going to fit right in this slot that we've created here and that'll pull up and down. Now, I thought that the little mechanism should match the sky background that I've created. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly ink that up. So I'm adding a little bit of the lemon drop.
Then I'm going to add a little bit more of that fruit punch and just try to make it blend to, towards the sky that we already have. And I'm also going to spritz this with a little bit of water as well to give that spattered effect there. So now when that sits behind that panel, it'll be the same color. You can see that there. So I want to line this mechanism up. So I want to make sure that it's right in the center of that little tab at the top. Now I've got this piece here which has these score marks on it, and I'm going to go ahead and fold that. And on the middle of the back of this panel, I'm going to place a little bit of the quarter inch double sided tape just on that center section. And then I'm going to flip it over and place a little bit of tape on the tab. I'm removing the backing from the tape. And I'll position this right below that opening there that we created, that little tab opening at the top. I'm going to position this right below that. This little piece just holds this mechanism in place when it goes up and down. Now I'm removing the backing from that little tab, and I'm going to tape everything together there. And you can see that that holds that little mechanism steady. Now. I wanted to make sure everything looks like it's where it should be, and I want to make this little tab, these little tabs, a little bit narrower. They're a little bit too wide for the pieces that we're going to be gluing to it. So I'm just going to make that a little bit narrower there. So that's where my little, my little ant is going to be sitting. And again, you'll see that a little bit of that mechanism is still showing. So I want to cut a little bit of that away, and I'm just going to cut on an angle here just to take away that excess. So you can play around with this mechanism, get it to the exact size that you want it to be. So now you can see that just that little ant will show. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I'm going back to my glue tube, and I'm going to just apply a little bit of glue on either side of these two tabs. And you want to make sure you don't get any glue on the back of that tab because you don't want it to stick to your card. So just kind of make sure that you check on that and move that around. And what I also like to do is add a little bit of the anti-static powder tool just to make sure it helps everything glide a lot easier. And you want to open that up and add a little bit inside there as well. And it will make it a lot easier for your little pull tab to move easily in and out. If it feels a little stuck at first, just move it in and out with your hands uh, quite a few times and it'll loosen things up. So now I've closed that tab all the way and then I've snipped off the excess. Now I've got this little piece here and it's got a little score on it. I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to press that out with my bone folder. Then I'm going to place a little bit of glue on both sides of this tab because it's going to be stuck to both sides of my little mechanism here. So I want to make sure I have glue on both sides. And then I'm just going to position that in place. And I just want to make sure I line it up nice and even. I'm just going to spend a little time here to make sure that's lined up properly. Then I'm going to let that dry. Just placing a couple blocks on there to make sure that it dries completely. Now I want to add a few more little goodies to this tab. So I'm adding the cheese and the little bag of chips here. Now, to put this little ant hill on my card, I want to pop it up. I just want to make sure there's enough room for my little pull tab pieces. So I'm going to pop this up, and I'm using a little bit of foam mounting tape. And you want to make sure you don't put any in the center there, because that's where your mechanism is. So you want to make sure you put tape just around the edges. Now, I'm lining that up on the card panel. 
and you can see how cute that's going to be. Now I'm going to add the branch and some leaves. I'm also going to pop up this branch, so I'm going to cut some little pieces of foam mounting tape here and place those all across the back. Then I'm removing the backing and I'm going to position this branch into place. I'm having it hang over a little bit there and then I'm going to cut away any excess. And for the leaves, I'm going to add a little bit of foam mounting tape towards the, the edge of the leaves. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of glue where the leaf meets the branch there. So I've decided where all those leaves need to go. And again, I'm putting a little bit of foam tape right at the, the tip of the leaf and a little bit of glue where the leaf will touch that branch. That way it'll lay nice and even on my card. So I did that for all of those leaves. So now you want to do want to make sure when you put the leaves on that they, they don't interfere with that mechanism there. So I'm going to take the middle size everyday sentiment banner and I'm going back for my sentiment to the crazy antics set. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this up using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And the sentiment that I want to create says, I love your crazy antics. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of color to this sentiment. So I'm going to stamp, I love your crazy. And I did have to ink this twice, so it's a good idea to put it in your misty stamp positioner just to make sure that you get a nice clear stamping. And then I'm going to stamp the ant part. And I could have done this all at once, but I decided to just do it in little sections here just to make sure everything was lined up. And then I'm going to do the antics part, the ICS part. So now I'm going to take the solid ant and I'm going to place that right inside the one, the outline one that we already stamped in black because I want to stamp the center of it in the fruit punch color. So I want to make sure that I line that up perfectly. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with the fruit punch. So I'm inking that up and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And that's just going to give us a little pop of color there. And I'm going to add three little exclamation points here. These are, this exclamation point is from a bug deal. So I'm going to do three of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and place that banner on that sentiment, that middle size banner, and I'm going to run that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. I'm placing a little bit of the quarter inch double sided tape on there, and I'm going to attach that to my card just maybe about a half inch from the bottom of the card and I'm centering it. Now I can go ahead and figure out where all my other little pieces are going to be. And I thought I'd use that extra leaf that we had left over from the branch down below here just to bring a little bit of that green color down towards the bottom as well. So I'm going to have all my little ants carrying all their food up to the little ant hill here. This one's got the little soda can. I just think these little guys are just so cute. I love this. I don't know where the idea of an ant hill came from. Don't even ask. I don't know, but I just thought it would be fun to have this little guy popping out with all the little food underneath him. So that's the way I want to lay this out. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all these pieces. And I just wanted to show you here, I am going to pop up a few of them with some foam mounting tape and the rest I will glue flat. So I've got my top folding A2 size card here, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to place some foam mounting tape on my panel all the way around. But I want to make sure that I don't put any on near that mechanism. So I want to go around the outside of that mechanism to apply my tape. 
So let me give you a closer look at the card here. We've got this adorable little ant that pops up and down from the ant hill. We've got a lot of dimension here on the card. And you can see all these cute little ants and a little bit of sparkle in the dirt there as well. And that little pop of color on the sentiment. So if you enjoyed this pull tab card, you could check out my blog. I have two others that I've done both with Lawn Fawn products, and they're listed up at the top here. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.